Epsilon Globe is an effect built specifically for adding final touches to your dithering work in Ditherboy. And in this video, I'm going to go over Epsilon Globe, the new controls we've added, what each of the controls does. And I'm going to tell you the use case or the reason I added this effect to Ditherboy so that you can use this information to copy the kind of effects I get, or hopefully you can use it to come up with your own process for your work in Ditherboy. So I'm only going to be talking about the glow in this video. If you would like more information about Ditherboy, then you can just check under this video. It is a one-time purchase software. We've been updating it all year and this glow effect is one of the newest updates and all the updates are included at no extra cost. So anyway, to get started, I've got an image open here. Uh, I'm going to zoom it in a little bit so that you can actually see a bit more of what's going on. But obviously to get started, I'm going to apply a dither effect and a combo I really like is um, silhouettes or side profiles and the waveform dither. And just to make sure this is legible, I'm going to scale this down and I'm going to lower the contrast a little bit too, just so that we've got some waves to work with. I'm also going to apply a palette. Uh, I'm going to apply a palette from the acid graphics category called Equine, Equine, Equine. I don't really, I don't know how you say that. I just named that after a song uh, that I like. But if you would like to get the acid graphics category, it's free. Obviously, you can just go to extras and click on color palettes and you can get it from there. But on your end, set up whatever glow you like make sure there is some depth to the glow or at least a discernible foreground or you know a legible subject to your image basically make sure it's clear what's being dithered or you know a face a word whatever make sure you can see what's in there and then you can come here so below palette below invert there is now an effects tick box so if you click on this you will get this little sidebar pop up now obviously we named the tick box effects and not glow which means that one day I can't say when I don't even know when but one day when you tick this box there'll be more than just epsilon glow here um, but for now that's all we've got so as you can see we've applied a glow straight away with the default settings that is pretty overpowering and basically leaves all but these very sort of medium pink stripes and the black and then everything else is affected by the glow now for this image that looks fine but if we set things up differently it might be a bit much so I'm going to go over these controls now. So every control in Epsilon Glow, every change you make takes place post dithering. So that means that whatever you set up in your glow settings is going to depend upon what you set up in this other panel on the right in your dither settings. Because the way this works is we get your original image. Your original image has these adjustments applied to it, like contrast, midtones, highlights and blur. We apply the dither effect. The dither effect uses the luminance threshold and the depth slider to determine the dither output. And then once the dither output has been calculated, the glow effect is then applied on top. If we were applying this glow effect pre-dither, then you wouldn't see any glow at all. It would just blow out your image basically and your dithering would just be a mess of mostly white pixels. So remember that whatever changes you make here can also be influenced by things like the contrast slider, midtones, highlights, depth, scale, all that kind of thing. If you look here, if I leave all these settings at the default and then if I move the contrast down, we will have less glow after I do this. So less of the pixels in our image will be affected by the glow because I moved the contrast down so the image got darker. But I'll just put that back for now. So the first control in the glow settings is threshold. This controls which parts of your image will emit glow. Lower values make more of the image glow, but if you move the threshold up, you will restrict the glow to only the brightest pixels in your dither. So the reason that when I said earlier, when I said this is designed to work well with dithering, this means that when you apply depth to a dither, if I disable this, you will see we've got multiple layers of depth here. So if I zoom right in from our equine palette, you've got these dark gray black stripes here. You've got this purple background where the midtones are. And then we've got these light pink stripes that go all the way through the image, all the way up to the top where nothing's really happening. So giving you this fine control of a glow threshold, 
means that if I up the threshold just a little bit, and by the way, if you hover over this, you can do it with your scroll wheel. So now it means you can isolate the glow effect to only certain layers of depth in your dither, which means that you can have like this guy, the cowboy, still be legible, visible. You can still make out the shape and the silhouette and everything from our original image while still applying this effect to just these less interesting parts of the dither to just give this like a new dimension and some atmosphere and just to make it more interesting basically so that is the intended use case of the threshold slider here now just to prove what i mean if you might have seen that a second ago if i move this up to 48 now the threshold is set at a point where the glow is being restricted to pixels that are brighter than any pixels we've got in our image so if i zoom out you can see there is no glow at all now that doesn't mean the glow has gone anywhere it means that nothing in our dither is qualifying to get past this threshold limit and emit a glow so if i move up my contrast now it'll bring in some more brightness into our dither and you get glow return if i keep going you'll get more and more and if i up it all the way it becomes really overpowering again so just to show you what that actually means if i disable the glow effect now what changed then if i lower the contrast back down here as i said before we've got this black gray for the darker pixels we've got this mid purple for the mid tones and we've got this light sort of lilac -y pink for the foreground but if i up the contrast it'll introduce this new pink from the palette uh, for the brightest pixels so you get more space for color more depth in the image and this new color that's been brought in does qualify for the threshold limit that we've set on the glow so that's basically what threshold is there for if you ever feel like your glow settings are good or your dither's good but you just can't get the glow right then it's probably your threshold that you need to adjust to make sure that the glow is only being applied to the areas of the image that you want it to apply so next we've got threshold smoothing this softens the boundary between what glows and what doesn't so if you set threshold smoothing to zero you might notice some hard banding in your glow basically and the glow will start very soon Suddenly. Whereas if you leave some thresholds smoothing on, basically you will, there'll be a more gradual start to the glow. It won't just not exist at one pixel and then start at the next one, obviously depending on your threshold and depending on the settings you've got for your dither. Next, we've got radius. This is the size of the glow and how far it spreads from bright areas. Small values to so like one to 20 here, you can see the default is 25, will create a tight focused glow that really just stays around the source. The nice stuff for radius happens, I'd say, before 100. So sometimes past 100, it can just get a little bit wishy-washy. For this image, it's based, like looking pretty good past 100, but I think that's because I've got so much smoothing and quite a tight threshold here. But um, yeah, if your glow ever looks a bit too blown out, then I'd say reduce the radius to something at lower than 100, basically. Obviously, you can go all the way if you want it to just be like bloom, essentially. But intensity, I try not need to explain intensity. This control how bright and strong the glow will appear in your image so if we lower the intensity the glow is far more subtle obviously at max it looks i prefer i just prefer cranking the intensity to 500 i would always rather restrict the areas that the glow is applying to with threshold than i would reduce the intensity of the glow that's just my preference we've also got aspect ratio so you can squash or stretch the glow effect here if I just lower my threshold a little bit, you might be able to get more of an idea of what this is doing. So on this image, it's pretty subtle, but it can introduce some like motion if you use this with the direction slider. I'm not sure how, how well this is coming across, but I can actually use these to angle the glow at the same angle as the horse here so um, this one is really on you're only going to get sort of changes out of this one really you're not going to get anything too extreme but it's a nice control to have and just make sure if you set an aspect ratio that you also mess with the direction too because you will get much out of aspect ratio if you're not aware of changing the direction on this as well so next we've got fall off now i'll explain this as best i can but in short a lower value on your fall off will create a gentle far reaching glow basically and higher values on fall off will create a rapid fall off so the glow will end quickly now that might sound like why would you ever set the fall off high but if you set a high fall off that will cause the glow to concentrate much closer to the source which can can look good for certain dithers so like this one if you wanted to just 
soften up these waves, these bright pink waves, then a higher fall off helps you do that. Obviously, if you go too high on this dither, but you know, that doesn't look very good. But essentially, a higher fall off is a more concentrated blow and a lower fall off is like more of a bloom. So much like aspect ratio and direction work together or threshold and threshold smoothing work together or radius and intensity work together, fall off will work with epsilon. So obviously, this is where the glow gets its name. These bottom three controls are are really what makes this unique compared to other glow effects that you might have seen in other software. The default for Epsilon, we set that at 50. And in short, Epsilon controls the minimum brightness of the glow. So at values like zero, around zero, zero to 20, the glow is really, really bright at its center and fades quickly, depending on the fall off value that you've set. Obviously, if I move Epsilon all the way to 100, the glow has a more flat and even brightness throughout. Personally, I don't like it at 100. I prefer it in the middle. So 50, I think, is the best place for Epsilon. But rather than leaving that static, we leave that to you so that you can control the relationship between Epsilon and fall off to control a base level of glow. But if you do leave it sort of as like a medium around 50, 40 to 60, I'd say, then you will end up with glow that has these like nice, hot, bright centers, which is, in my opinion, like the, the best way to, to do glow. You want like a nice, brilliant, radiant section of dithering or what, you know, whatever it is, whatever it is you're applying the glow to, you want the source of that to be like hot almost. And then you want that to bloom outward in a way that is not even because like you're going to have different levels of brightness and stuff through your image whereas if you set epsilon to 100 like the glow is just going to be even everywhere it's always going to have a base level of maximum so if you leave epsilon at 50 you can't go wrong in my opinion so the last control here is distance scale this fine tunes how the glow responds to distance from its source a lower distance scale will allow the glow to spread further and a higher distance scale will compress the glow closer to its source so it's like adjusting the sensitivity of the distance and you can use this in combination with the fall off slider to like dial in the exact shape of the glow that you want as well as like you know aspect ratio and stuff like that so to me the intended use case here if i i might just pull in another image to show you that this applies to other dithers as well so if we just start again here i'll add a floyd steinberg dither to this we'll pull in the rose bushes palette i'll just up the depth a little bit on here and i'm now going to set up a glow that hopefully will leave out these black pixels, these purple pixels, these sort of lilac, lavendery pixels, but it will include these bright pink sections. So I'm going to do that with the threshold. And to be honest, the default might even just, just give me what I want here. But if I tick effects, it's a little bit overpowering. So I know all I need to do is up the threshold until it's affecting the pixels that I want it to affect. I've now got a little bit of like banding here. So you can see here, this line is just too harsh on the edge of these pixels where the glow is. So if I come out now and up my threshold smoothing and my radius, we can get that to be a little bit less intense and a little bit less of a hard edge. I can then mess with aspect ratio and the direction to make these two spheres here, at like sort of the center of the image, have a more intense glow than the rest of the image. I'll just zoom in again so you can see see hopefully more clearly what's going on and I'm going to move down the distance scale to give this like a way more blown out glow so at like 41 we start getting a really really nice bloom effect around here I'm going to leave fall off and epsilon alone but if I move the epsilon down just a little bit uh, you'll see that it changes the base layer of the glow remember what I said before about epsilon just setting kind of the minimum brightness of a glow so now i've got a glow that essentially has like a bit of a gradient to it and it's isolated only to certain pixels and it's working with my depth and my palette and it works with any of these dithering algorithms if i just load in a new one doesn't matter what you load in uh, you'll still get the same sort of glow result if you leave the settings the same so yeah i just wanted to do a video on epsilon glow so that now i am free when i make my tutorials and i show glow effects and time passes and i 
I forget the inner workings of this feature, I'm a bit more free to just make the tutorials I want to make without having to worry about making sure you know all this in every video. So um, yeah, this is really just to set you up to understand this so that going forward, when I use Glow in a tutorial or when you use it in your work, uh, you can consult this video if you need to. And yeah, you know, you know why this is put in here. You know what the intended use is and hopefully you can go and find your own use for it. Worth saying as well, if you disable the dither, this will also work just as a standalone glow effect. If you've got, you know, something you want it to glow and you don't want to dither it and Adobe After Effects and Adobe Photoshop or whatever software you're using doesn't have a nice glow, then yeah, you can use this without a dither as well. But that is all for now. More Dither Boy stuff on the way. Thank you for all the support that has led up to us being able to create this update and I'll see you in the next video.